Welcome back. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Sao Paulo lock-in tournament. Just kind of, not my, my official preview, but now that we have the bracket, and I think a lot of people have reacted to the bracket and kind of their thoughts on it, I wanted to give my own thoughts and ideas on it because I think there's a more nuanced take than just, oh no, single elimination is bad. Um, in this context, yes, it's tough seeing that there's this big hyped up tournament with all 32 teams playing um, for it just to be a single elimination tournament. Um, but I think there's a lot more that goes in on this. And also I think in the end of the day, this is gonna be a much more high stakes turn because of that. It might mean less in the context of the whole circuit, but I think it'll be important um, for each team that goes because they will get that global experience off, off rip instead of just staying isolated to their regions and never getting that chance to see these other teams, play these other teams. It gives everybody an equal chance to fight for the title. Now, so if you don't know, the Sao Paulo lock-in tournament is a 32-team bracket single elimination tournament. The entire bracket is split up into two sections, which then goes back into one section, but it's all single elimination anyways. So it's basically just a big 32-team bracket. Now, a lot of people online were complaining a lot about this, saying that, oh, this is unfair for the team that fly all the way out just to lose in the first round. And yes, that is unfortunate. It is a lot of costs. But if you were to have this be a double elimination or even like a double elimination after a certain amount of time, I think it one takes away from what has happened previously, but it also, this is already a long tournament. This is already a two week, two or three week tournament, I think. So it's February 13th to March 5th. So that's yeah, two, two and a half to three weeks uh, of straight Valorant. Almost like the summit and the first opportunity that everyone can play together. I, I less liken this to some sort of big major event and more so to a sort of a season primer almost. Something similar to like a Marsh Madness idea where yes, like anybody can lose. So the, the best team could get upset in the first round. Dude, we have some crazy first round matches over that in a second. This tournament is much less a, a season defining tournament win for some of that wins, but more so a primer to what teams are capable of, what they've been working on, and it gives everybody an opportunity to show what they have, even if it is just in a first round uh, exit, or if it's in a finals win, I think they'll all be worth the same. Now, looking at the bracket, we have some crazy matchups. Um, in the first round, I'm going to look at this right now. Uh, we have some like standard stuff like Koi versus NRG. We probably know who's going to win that. Um, Gen G versus Lab, probably know who's going to win that. A lot of the a lot of the newer form teams probably aren't going to be winning these tournaments because they don't have that experience to like you know they, they don't have that experience together. So the small micro interactions, sure they'll probably beat the team that they're seated over, but when it comes to about the even level that experience kind of pulls through. And I think that's going to show for teams like NRG, teams like Sentinels. We already saw it happen to Sentinels at the Ludwig tournament. Crazy turn, by the way. I'll probably talk about that in a little bit. Um, but teams like DRX, Paper Rex, these teams have been together for a long time and have that chemistry and have showed that chemistry at the top level already. I would say my top favorites right now are Na'Vi, because they have most of the same roster, Paper Rex, Cloud9, 100 Thieves, and DRX. I think those are the five main teams I'm going to go for right now. Um, I think Fnatic also has a, a call at the throne. Um, that'd be a great, but they have a really tough bracket. Another super cool thing about this tournament is that they actually accepted two Chinese rosters uh, to this tournament. The two Chinese teams, Edward Gaming, and the new FPX now. FPX, um, it's a... Don't be... Don't be... FPX is now actually a Chinese roster because they sold their roster to Navi. They proved to be at the top winning the LCQ last semester, or uh, winning the LCQ last term. Oh my God, I'm too school pilled. Winning the LCQ last split. FPX has been doing just as well, even beating Edward Gaming at the most recent tournament, literally this past year. So FPX is by no by no means like another a sneezing team. Edward Gaming showed, has upset potential and FPX might be better than them. So they're more or less on the same level. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these teams actually slot into that. Uh, international Valorant level, and also how the Chinese Valorant scene will kind of develop now that Valorant's been accepted as a Chinese game. So in the first round, you have some standard matchups. Cloud9 versus Paper Rex is a first round matchup, and the winner of that plays DRX. That sucks. And literally right under that, it's Heretics, Evil Geniuses, MIBR, and Talon. So it's like, come on. This, Someone hates these teams right there. Your placement in this tournament matters a lot less because it is just a single elimination thing. 
versus a double elimination or a pools format where usually the best or the better team at least comes out on top, barring an upset or two. You have 100 Thieves versus Edward Gaming. That's gonna be a big matchup, especially because of we saw how dominant 100 Thieves was, but also Edward Gaming has been together for a long time as well. Um, finally unlocking the Chinese Valorant scene, which is gonna be super exciting to see. Them and FPX are gonna be super cool to watch play, especially on the international stage. Sentinels versus Fnatic. This is why I kind of gave Fnatic a bit of an asterisk. To qualify for this top four is gonna be impossible. <laughs> like it's actually so hard for there to be only four best teams out of this crop of, of talent but I guess that's what franchising is these days. As for who I think is gonna actually win, I'm gonna keep that a secret for now because I'll probably do another Sao Paulo lock-in uh, preview video right before the tournament to kind of get you acclimated with who I think are gonna win, who's looking to for super primed, who's looking just all right. Uh, give that whole kind of synopsis right before so you're primed and ready to go. I'll probably also run a contest or something on my Discord to kind of keep people engaged and just see who your brackets are and who you think is gonna win. Because I think it's, it's such a hard thing to do, like to predict us all, especially with like the March Madness style of, of formatting. It's gonna be super interesting. Anyways, that's all I have.